In this tutorial, we're going to look at Synth, which is a free tool for micro-podcasting. In other words, for creating tiny, short podcast episodes and even stringing them together into a longer, more traditional podcast experience. As you can see here, the address for Synth is gosynth.com. As it says here, you can create 256 second audio or video sound bites that can be shared. So let's get started. I'm going to click sign up in the upper right corner and I could just link it to my Google account or my Twitter account or I could click the sign up button and put in the following information to get signed up just based on my email and a password. Give me a minute to sign into my account and then I'll resume the video. So here I am on my Synth homepage. Now during the sign up process, if you're over age 15, you don't need any special code or anything like that. You just can set up your own account. If you're under age 15, you'll need to have a code from a teacher, typically. And putting in that code will get you set up and ready to go. Now here on my Synth homepage, you can see that I have a feed, basically a list of things to listen to, and I can click this play all button to hear them. Introducing podcasts in bite-sized increments. Now, when this particular synth is completed, what happens? And just listen. Unless you do something, it will automatically proceed to the next synth. So you can just be working on something, and one synth after another after another will continue to play. I'm going to X out of this, but these two items are worth listening to and participating in if you're interested. For now, though, I'm going to move away from feed and look at explore. So if you go to explore, you can browse some micro podcasts, some small podcasts that have been created using synth. You can also search. Let's say you're interested in movies. You do a search and it looks like there's an option there for a movie podcast. Maybe you're interested in video games or TV or whatever it might be. You should be able to find some podcasts that people have made on synth. Next, we have the podcast page where all of your podcasts that you create will be listed. And there's a library. Every synth that you record appears here. Now, regardless of which of these tabs you're on, you should have a plus sign here at the right, and I'll click that. And I'm about to start my brand new podcast. I'm so excited. And the purpose of this podcast is going to be to talk to my students in my English class about literature and language and to hopefully get them excited about it. So I'll just click this Start button, and I get a pop-up from Synth asking if it can access my microphone. So I need to allow that if I want to use Synth. Now I'm using Google Chrome right now. If I were using a different browser, this pop-up might be across the bottom or the top. It might show up somewhere else. But in Chrome, this is where it appears typically. So I'll click Allow. Hi students. This is my podcast on language and literature in the English language. I hope that you'll enjoy listening to me talk about literature that's important to me. Okay, pretty cheesy. Not the best, probably, but I just clicked stop, and that completed my first podcast episode. Now you're thinking, well, that's just 19 seconds. But that's the point of Synth. It's recording very short messages to students or to an audience. So I can play this back to hear if it sounds okay. So that sounds okay. So now, if I wanted to, I could record some more or record again, but I think I'll just click Done. If I want to, I can turn on the transcription option, which I think is kind of fun and exciting. Right now, because I turned that on, Synth is working to transcribe my recording. I'll be notified when it's ready, but in the meantime, I'll click Next. It takes me to a page where I can put in a title. It's already got the date in there for me. So I'll just edit that title a little bit, and I can put in some hashtags. If I want to provide links, I can. These could be links to documents that I want the students to have access to, or it could be links to short stories or poems that are on the internet that are in the public domain. But that's a good option to be able to associate my podcast episode with some links. I'll just click Next at this point, and I can choose whether or not I want to share my synth publicly. You probably remember right at the beginning I showed you the explore page where you can explore other people's podcasts. If I want mine highlighted there, potentially, then I would leave that on. If I don't, I would turn that off. I'll just turn it off and you can see that I have a podcast already set up. It's a private podcast called My First Podcast. So I'll just share it that way. And now here I am in my synth library. All of my podcast episodes are here.
Now, if I want to look at the podcast itself, not just the episodes, I can click here on podcasts. This is the podcast title. And if I click on that, it'll show each episode in that podcast. So hopefully that structure makes some sense. I could have one podcast on English literature and another on Spanish teaching, another on technology in the classroom. I could have like three different podcasts or more, and they would all be listed here with their individual episodes inside of them. Or I can go here to library just to see every single thing I've ever made. Okay, so my first podcast episode is done. Now let's say a week from now I want to make another episode. I just go to my account, click the plus sign, and I'm ready to record my second episode. I click start. So students, I'd like to talk to you about the experience I had the other day rereading Edgar Allan Poe's poem, Annabelle Lee. I hadn't read this for a couple of years, and when I did so, I found it to be, okay, I'm going to stop it there. I'm out of ideas. So I'll click done. Again, I get the option to transcribe. I can click next and put in some more information. So this is a really ridiculously easy way to create podcasts and podcast episodes. Now, because I'm adding this to the same podcast as my first episode, Synth will know that they belong together. And I can just click share. Now, when I go to my podcasts and click on the podcast name, it shows two episodes. Now, at this point, I wonder if the transcription is done for my first episode. Let's try it. I can just click there, click play. Hi, students. This is my podcast on language and literature in the English language. So you can see the transcription isn't perfect, but still, that's a great option to have. And look, I can go here to these three dots, and there's ways I can share this individual episode. But also, look at this. There's an edit option, and if I click that, I can edit the transcription. So here it says, hi, students. It should be hi like that, although I do wonder sometimes. Okay, so I'll save that fixed transcription and exit. So now you can see the official transcription is fixed. Okay, now I'd like to show you how students can access this. Yes, I could share individual episodes just by using those three dots and getting an embed code or getting a web link to share with them just by clicking. Here's the web link, and here's how you copy the embed code. But it might be better to, instead of sharing individual episodes, to share the actual podcast itself. So here I am in my podcast. I can click on my first podcast. Here is a share button. There's also some options. I can describe the podcast, etc. I can have a podcast code if I want. I can even put in a picture to go with my podcast. But I'm just going to click share. Here's a web link that I can send to anyone and they'll be able to listen to my synth podcast. Or I can copy the web link and this code that the students will have to enter to access the podcast. Or the one that I like best in most cases is this, get embed code. I'll just click that button. It copies the embed code for the entire podcast. And now I can try sharing it in a learning management system like Google Classroom or Canvas or Blackboard. Now with embed codes, Google Classroom doesn't always like that and it doesn't always work. Let's try it. So I paste in the code, it says it's not valid. So instead, I'll try Weebly. If you're not familiar with Weebly, you should watch my video tutorial. Weebly's been updated since that tutorial. It looks a little different when you start, but once you get past the start page, it's very similar to what I show in the video. So I just clicked and dragged this embed code portlet onto the page, and then I click to set the custom HTML. I'll edit custom HTML and paste in the code, and then I can just click outside the code area and there's my synth podcast. Now, of course, you still could very easily share your synth podcast in Google Classroom. Just use this option, the web link. So I copy that, paste it in, click post. And to show you that this really works, I'm going to go back to synth and I'm going to log out of my account. So I'm not signed in. I'm just like any student going to this website. When the students click that link, it takes them to synth to this specific podcast and they can play all. And once that episode's over, the next episode begins. So I really like synth. I like how simple it is and I do see a lot of uses that are possible in the classroom and also in entertainment. And there are business applications as well. 
Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you're interested in supporting my channel, you could become a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.